Previously on Funny Science Fiction. But in the past, there there were cases where I was asked to speak Japanese lines, but they weren't actually translated by uh, a legitimate <laughs> Japanese speaking person. So that, you know. Hi, this is Bill Lobley, and you're listening to the Funny Science Fiction Podcast. The podcast that was launched in 2020, along with other plagues against the whole of humanity. All right, so our guest today is a voice actor who's had some pretty significant and recognizable roles from shows and video games that you have most likely watched or played. Like Arcane, Ice Age 4, Celebrity Deathmatch, Grand Theft Auto, a couple different incantations of that game, Fallout 76, Bioshock, Star Wars The Old Republic, and many more. I could keep going, but we'll just say and many more. So uh, we are very happy and proud to welcome Bill Lobley, to the Funny Science Fiction Podcast. Welcome to the show, Bill. I am thrilled to be here. Finally. He says that now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, we haven't even started asking questions yet, and he's like, all excited. I love this. It's like, by all the right. way, when you meet Torquemada for the first time, he's just a very affable guy. <laughs> and then when it's over. <laughs> so Nice. But anyway, uh, it's really, really good to see you guys. Yeah, excellent. We're, we're glad to have you on today. So, Bill, as has become customary on our show, uh, because we're nerds who love a good origin story, uh, we'd like to find out about our guests and what their origin story is, what got them started. So, in the story of Bill Lobley, what influenced your interest in career in the arts? Where did you begin with all of this? Um, well, they say when I came out of the womb, the doctor slapped me <laughs> and I, I did a soliloquy. <laughs> So it's a, people say, when did you know? And it's like, I, I really never didn't know. Um, is that too many negatives in that one? But uh, it, it yeah. really was it really was just something that I always wanted to do. And, you know, you get called up in first grade to read something off the blackboard and you do something silly. And, you know, there, there, there's your, your first injection. Do you know what I mean? So uh, it, it's always been that. And then, of course, you know, and... The great thing about school, which I think they still do, masks or not, they're always doing plays and they're always doing opportunities for kids to do something that puts them on a stage so parents can bring their either their Instamatic or their iPad and get a picture of them. So, of course, I did all those in school. People like to get, you know, their, their, their kids on stage in schools and stuff. And I started doing that, of course, doing all the shows. Um, and then it came time for my, you know, my parents to say uh, so. Let's talk about college. And I was so excited to say all the acting schools I had looked at, like, you know, Emerson and, you know, you, 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 you picked it, NYU, all the good acting schools. And um, uh, the first thing they said was, all right, so listen, uh, let's talk about careers. I don't hear anything about that acting crap. So <laughs> it's like I had a I had a re up. Uh, I, I came back and decided I told my dad that I would tell him that I'd be going into film, film production. Um, and I figured like, well he'll buy that and uh he totally did so that's great good idea so anyway so i basically just ran around fordham university um doing anything that had to do with acting and if we're doing a film course i was the actor in the film uh i did get a film degree so i wouldn't i wouldn't you know change it if i could um uh and, and then after i got out i just started making the rounds as an actor in new york city you know eight by ten headshots banging on doors putting it by tends into mail slots that you really sh you're not supposed to do that but i did you know you have to be bold um and then finally i was looking at uh, uh one of the trade papers backstage is the one i think it's still there i don't know if it's still there anymore and it said uh, it was an ad for something it said wanted talented humorous young men so i figured two out of three um and, <laughs> and uh it wound up being this really wild thing that was basically an audio visual puppet so on the screen, it looked like a cartoon character. This is probably, it developed probably in the 60s and 70s. Um, and this was 19... And uh, I, I started doing this puppet. But on the screen, it looked like a cartoon character. So I was telling my friends I was voicing cartoon characters, you know, and they, they love that. But really, I'm doing puppets and then started doing the, you know, the hand puppets. See, I'm still good at it. Yeah. Um, see, watch. watch, watch. <laughs> They're lovely. It's a fine actor. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I started doing that and then really toured the country and then it, having no money in my pocket I went from that to be like wow the, they'll put me up at the you know at the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs for doing a puppet and then I, I kind of got out of that and then my wife said maybe well girlfriend at the time she said have you ever thought about 
you know, like improv classes or, uh, and I did started working with, with the groundling slash Gotham city improv doing character work. Then that kind of melded when I went looking for an agent. And then after that, you know, went through one good agent who was more for like marquee people. So basically they just took phone calls. <laughs> they, you know, they didn't get you out on auditions. Oh yeah. Uh, and then I, you know, sadly left them because they were wonderful. They came to my wedding. And then I just started doing uh, commercials, commercials, characters, working, 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 then the occasional video game. And then they kind of balanced out uh, and then uh, on camera stuff too. So, yeah, so it was just kind of a, it was kind of a steady flow more than, you know, this overnight thing that, you know, some people lie about, but um, yeah. And then just started doing a lot of characters for video games, still doing the puppets. Uh, and then, you know, animation started to happen more, but I don't know if you guys know this, but it, it for a while, every, every agent would tell you, you have to be in LA to do cartoons. You have to go. And if, if you go, and even if you're bi-coastal, you have to lie and say that you are a resident. So it was really, really weird. So I didn't do it for as much, you know, from when I wanted to start doing it. So, uh, but yeah, connections and technology. And suddenly it's like, okay, it's a real thing now. So, so that's nice. it. That's, um, that was that too much. I don't know. No, that was no perfect. perfect. Uh, we've we've said this many times in the show. Long long answers are good answers. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, sometimes. Oh, uh, you've walked into a gold mine. <laughs> awesome. It's time for us to make fools of ourselves. Yes. My therapist is like, Bill, our time is up. I said, but I just said good morning. <laughs> <laughs> really long good morning. I understand that. I feel looking that. At, uh, yeah. Looking at your IMDb, and you had mentioned that you have done both on screen and voiceover. But there is a lot more voiceover than there is on screen. Yeah, well, the, the, the on I'm a liar. No, no, the uh, the the on screen stuff would be mostly commercials. That's what mm -hmm. people would. If I were to get recognized, at least at that point, uh, it would be for a commercial I was in. Okay. Um, so, uh, do you prefer you know, doing voiceover? Um, well, he, someone just I was just talking to somebody about this, and that's uh, here's the thing. Um, I think any actor wants to be seen, really. Um, uh, the other side of that is J.B. Blank from uh, uh, Arcane always says, Bill, voice acting is acting. So he's like, and, and so I think you always get there. But I, I guess the point is no one's going to look at me and cast me as a, you know, uh, a 90-year-old 90 90 Chicago guy. And no one's going to look at me and cast me as a six-foot-five cowboy. However... <laughs> When we when we <laughs> when we close the thing off, it's like, hey, hey, how you doing there? <laughs> or like, well, hey, uh, well, I want some grub. You know? So <laughs> you, you, it's that has really opened it up because that that is, a, you know, kind of an uh, at least a perception defining thing. Mm -hmm. So do I prefer it? You're damn right. I prefer it because I get to do more stuff. <laughs> However, you stick a camera in front of me and it's, you know, it's like. <laughs> Katie by the door, as they say, or Katie bar the door. What's the expression? Okay. I understand though the 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 draw of the camera, the feel of the spotlight. The it is nice to be watched and looked at and have somebody enjoy that the actual physical performance behind something. But yeah, they say the roar of the grease, the roar of the grease paint, the smell of the crowd. <laughs> the um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, but I did a lot of stage stuff. I mean, I I like I said, I, I work with an improv company, which really, you know, if anybody's interested. Uh, go with, uh, you know, uh, I guess you go to Second City in Chicago, you go to Groundlings in LA, you go to Upright Citizens mm -hmm. Brigade, or uh, the company I was with was Gotham City Improv, which is an offshoot of Groundlings. That was such stunning, stunningly good character development work. Um, and, and that included writing. So yeah. I was already writing for this cartoon character. So th that became part of it. But, but that, was, that was a show every week, doing improv every week, writing sketches. Um, some of them were like, like the cold opening on Saturday Night Live. We would say our show's like Saturday Night Live, only funny. That was something. <laughs> but, um, but so, so there was just a huge, huge, um, you know, part of what my, you know, coming up and, and training was in character work and improvisation. And that, you know, they, they'll tell you it doesn't. They'll tell you it's always scripted. But a lot of times in many video games and cartoons, there's always a little bit of room to, to add something. And um, so that's been that's been a great thing. And I wouldn't trade that any more than I would, you know, trade the, the fact that I know, you know, how to point the light and hopefully set up a microphone because of my my sterling career and, you know, in film production. 
I think I did something on the movie Splash as a PA and I walked off. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to do a night shoot and I just left. I was tired. So what advice would you like to give to a younger you? Uh, I, 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 in an instant, I would say get started sooner. And, and this is me saying in the womb, I was, I was ready. Um, but I, listen, but th that's a double-edged sword because, uh, b because of the way I started off with things and, you know, studying film and television along with, you know, theater stuff. That's one thing. But I also hooked up with a great bunch of guys that I'm still friends with, all my film major friends. One guy's now a cameraman, one guy's now a producer, one guy's, you know, a, 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 a sports guy. Um, if I if that would be the advice career wise, th that'd be it. But then again, then you wonder what if what if none of that other stuff happened? How does that inform you as an actor? If you have like a, a really solid friend and family life, you know, th that goes to mental health right there. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, what what the advice would be? I don't know. Anybody would, would look back on something. If only I had been more aggressive. It's like, you know. Asking that girl out that you didn't ask out if only had I asked her. Sure. Out, you know, uh, so there, I would say there's definitely like regrets and like, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? And then then I look at some of the things that occurred because I didn't do it. And I'm like, you know, not so bad. <laughs> really not so bad. Right. Yeah, definitely double edge. I get, I get what you're saying there for sure. Okay. So, Bill, as our resident Star Wars fanboy uh, on the on the set. Um, I'm always excited to talk to someone who has had a part of the Star Wars universe in some way, shape, or form, whether it's in print, uh, you know, they wrote a book, or they were on the screen, whether the big screen, the, the, the television screen, or they were in a video game I may have played. You, of course, were in Star Wars The Old Republic. You played Administrator Croas, uh, oh, Master... Je What's is there that? a Jeth in there? I want to say Jeth. Is there a... Yeah, Some Master Arca that? Jeth and Senator Bart. You played all three roles. So um and it's a pretty massive online game so my question is and this is my standard question for anybody who's been in a, the star wars universe were you a fan of star wars heading into the project and if so what does it mean to you to be involved with star wars um uh, well uh, i'll take the second part first I feel like a politician i'll answer the second part first yeah that's fine because I can't remember the first part. And um, if you weren't a Star Wars fan, it's okay. I'll recover in time. That's right. No, no. First of all, how can you not be? <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. Um, I uh, Being part of something like that is great, but it, I feel like I'm such a small part of it. But there, there's such, you know, this cachet. It's like it's Star Wars. I mean, that is Star Wars The Old Republic is a game that one of the games that is mentioned most frequently to me. You, you Star Wars The Old Republic? And it's like, I wasn't. Luke Skywalker, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It wasn't any of those mm -hmm. guys, or that you know, that wasn't Boba Fett, right? <laughs> it wasn't Boba Fett, the guy that like shines his helmet. Well, I'm trying to keep this clean, but um, so it's like I, I, but to, when people say it, they just completely just react. And it, it was long enough ago that you know I kind of remember the sessions. I just remember they were all different. Like, of course, we're going back to how um, great it is when you can do two different things. It's like they show you the picture and this guy has one of those enormous brains. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a cookbook. Um, you know, uh, and then another guy's just like, it's an old professor in the laboratory. Whatever you do, don't drink that. You know, and then a guy drinks it. Um, uh, so there's that. Uh, so it feels great to be part of it. Uh, but am I a fan? How can you not be a fan? It is, it is, uh, it, it is brought back. I mean, it was before Indiana Jones, I think the first one. So mm -hmm. it's brought back that whole boom, uh, B movie thing. And it's brought back good versus evil. And it, you know, I, I, I would like to think that George Lucas knew that he was going to have this. What's the, what's you, you probably know better than me as a, uh, you know, a star Wars fan, like what, what's three trilogies, an analogy. Um, Sure, we'll call it that. Yeah, we'll go Look with that. Up. Okay. But, you know, I, I was thinking, like, what someone asked me recently, what's your favorite? And I said, the, A New Hope. <laughs> it's like number four. That has everything. It, 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 it's, the okay. hub of, it's the hub of the wheel. Now, mm -hmm. you can go tech technologically. It's like me, the film guy, and watching them, you know, run a, you know, an X-wing down a, a, 
a, a, a length of fishing line and it really explodes and they do it in super slow motion, you know, and they can do that now. Some guy can do it in his basement on a computer, you know, right. But th- th- so much groundbreaking stuff in that. And the storyline oh, yeah. is so solid. And if you if you put them all in front of me, said, which would you watch? I, I would probably pick that one because it is just like I said, it, it's seminal. Uh, so, yeah. yeah thrilled for anyone says like oh my god you were in star wars and i feel the same way about about star trek i've done some stuff for them too but um the star wars thing that universe is uh it's iconic so i I, I, yeah i'm it's really one of my favorite like touchstones for like what good science fiction is that's awesome you know the cool thing about to me about about uh, universes like star trek and star wars is that and yes i smacked my microphone i know i did it again I do that all anyway, the time. <laughs> I do. Yeah. The he funny thing at least is once an episode, the, the, the bad thing is, is I moved it from this side of the desk thinking if I put it over here, I wouldn't hit it as often because it was in the way of my mouse. And anyway, so anyway, uh, look, I'm Italian. So my hands are moving all the time. <laughs> I'm Irish. I talk with my hands. So yeah, I was doing I, something today for, for Nickelodeon. And um, I realized that I was just uh, they had the zoom on me because it was a the session was, you know, through L.A. And I just realized, wow, if you don't see yourself, <laughs> how much you're moving. <laughs> um, so listen, th- listen, it's a good it's a good thing. It's like they say to a theater actor, if you're sitting in the front row and someone complains that, you know, that you're spitting, most theater professors will say, if you're not spitting, you ain't doing it right. <laughs> so I would think if, you, if you're in any kind of voiceover stuff, if you're not, you know, if you're if you're tied up in a straitjacket, you know, it's it's it's, not, it's definitely not the same. So uh so no don't feel bad oh no i mocking him about it how much spit are we talking here uh like uh, <laughs> like or hamilton like wear, levels not like of wear spit. a poncho that wouldn't like bring a poncho to the theater <laughs> no, it's, you know. i don't think he's talking like you know gallagher you know getting soaked in the front <laughs> row smashing melons in the front row to uh, be or not to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but anyway, it's, a, it's a fair amount. Put it this way, like a, like a drizzle. Think of a drizzle, you know, in London. <laughs> and, all, and all of a sudden in my mind, all I can see is Sylvester the cat from Looney Tunes. <laughs> yeah. Fluffering the fucking <laughs> ass. <laughs> so anyway, what I was getting to before I, I lo- took us down that lovely rabbit hole of distraction um, was that I think that anytime that you have a role in the universes of Star Trek or Star Wars or or something along those lines where it's such a recognizable universe, whether you have a, a small credit or you have a large credit, it, it's something that people are excited to hear about and they want to know, you know, about it and, and everything else. So, okay. Hey, what was your experience? And, you know, how do you feel about it? And, you know, were you a fan and all those other things? And I, and I think that's a really cool because, you know, there, there are, there are a lot of supporting roles outside of the Luke Skywalkers and the Kylo Ren's and the, the Ray Skywalkers and, and all that kind of stuff, the, you know. The ice cream maker guy. Even everybody loves the ice cream maker guy, even. Yeah. yeah. What about the guy in uh I think it's I think it's seven. Uh the guy who sells the parts. <laughs> the guy, yeah. He's like, yeah. you know, the the shystery kind of dealer. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like yeah. So it's like these things have been and of you know, of of course, um um Jar Jar Binks, but I I know we shouldn't talk about him at all. But we love um, him. <laughs> but uh, th- that's a really interesting thing because if none of the things you said weren't, you know, weren't true about just so many ancillary characters, I, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have done Star Wars The Old Republic. There you, you know? go. Although I did talk to one actor and I said, yeah, it's Star Wars The Old Republic. He says, who'd you do? I said, well, I did uh, Croyus and I did this guy and I did the guy in the lab, whatever. I said, who'd you do? And he says, Luke Skywalker. So I'm like, okay fine um show off fine yeah, be that way that's, that's, okay <laughs> then, you know, sometimes by the way here's a tip sometimes actors will ask you a question like that so they can give you their answer mm. so you look <laughs> they look better so beware. there you go all beware. right um but yeah it's it, it's great to be you know associated with that universe and uh oh it's, sure it's great i feel like if i wear a star wars t-shirt i feel like i have something to talk about right absolutely my biggest role was a spoon in a high school production of Beauty and the Beast. So <laughs> any character in Star Wars is cooler than that. Don't believe me? Ask the dishes. Exactly. Yeah. I was a dancing spoon. There you go. It's a great number. It's a showstopper. It was a lot of fun. There was a 
giant kick line involved. I, I watched Beauty and the Beast once. Does that count? While eating pudding with a spoon. Oh. Look at me go. I'm supporting like the arts. right I, in the show. I'm supporting really the arts. You could be the, you know, the, the Lansing chapter president for the Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> 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 it's, not, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. A lot of pudding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's wrong with that? So another universe that you got to be a part of that I was actually kind of excited to talk to you about is Bioshock. It is an interesting series of games. It is yeah. <laughs> interesting is the only word I can come up with at this moment, point in time. I am currently um, playing through Bioshock Infinite. So I hear your voice uh, a lot right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, but that's, um, you know, there are certain things that I, I look at now, uh, like Bioshock Infinite. And first of all, I think people's like, well, you know, Jeremiah Fink was such an evil guy. It's like, yeah, and you know, he's 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 not kind and and dare I say racist, and uh, but definitely like you know, he's got he's got his you know, uh, he he's had putting himself in a certain direction. I'm not saying whether he's gonna there's gonna be a pitchfork at the end of it, <laughs> and eternal flames. But um, yeah, it's an interesting universe. But I always I always submit that you know, you, to have good, you got to have evil. Mm -hmm. So that whenever I play a, you know, the, the heavy and he doesn't start off as the heavy, he's a big, big glen handling guy, right. but um, that world, that, that world of Columbia uh, is unbelievable. And, it and is. Uh, uh, I actually went to the premiere, call it premiere. It was the, the launch of the game and it was at some great castle-ish hotel in Boston. Um, it was some Marriott that tra they was transformed from like an old building that was like a castle. So it was a great setting for it, but I got to meet these guys that created that world. And, you know, if you, again, it's like Star Wars. If you think it's just like a couple of people, it's like George Lucas, you know, it, it just the, the worlds they create, it, it's unbelievable. And that particular one, it's gorgeous. And um, it, re it really, it really is like it's, it's otherworldly, which is, it it's is supposed to be. It is. It and is the story a, is wild too. It, yeah. Like, so I had, I had started playing Bioshock Infinite probably would have been four years ago at this point because I yeah I was pregnant and then I had a newborn and I'm like I don't have time to play video games but now that I have a three and a half year old I'm like I've got a little more time on my hands so I started replaying infinite um I've actually never finished the storyline I do know the story because internet and spoilers and walkthroughs and whatnot but Jeremiah Fink is a weird character um not that Booker DeWitt's any better, really, but you had so many different time periods and all of these things matched into that conglomeration of Columbia. So how do you come up with that voice for Jeremiah Fink when you have the different aspects that they've brought into the game? Well, see, I think sometimes um, either if there's no NDA involved, uh, they'll give you a little touchstone, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't, it's hard to say whether I like it or not when they say, oh, he's like Ray Walston in my favorite Martian. It's like, oh, and then you look up, it's like, oh, I see what they're going for. So, you know, archetypes are one thing. Um, but with that, I think I had a sense that it was like that period, you know, that kind of, boy, I, you know, you want to say industrial revolution, you know, that, that, that kind of feel. Um, or the twenties, or you hear some of the music and listen to mm -hmm. this cue. It's good night, Irene. And it's like, okay, so now we're like, are we away? 1890s? What are we talking about? Right. And so like you get a sense of it. Um, and then you get a sense of where he is in that world. You know, is he a minion? Like Stanley Poole in, in Bioshock too. He's just a, just a reporter, you know, mm -hmm. and clawing his way up. But Jeremiah Fink had gotten there and now has begun to abuse power. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's he's something of a of a bigger guy and he's got a little bit of a feel of a man who can stand on stage and have the evil girl stoned, <laughs> you know. So uh, but he's also then he's then he's dark, you know, mm -hmm. just really, really dark in the confines of his little, you know, his little hovel or it's more palatial, you know, and he's plotting and he's scheming and you hear what he's all about. A lot of backroom deals. So all that stuff builds it. Um I wish you could say they hand you enough of a script to get all that. But once you, you, know, you, 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 you get the role and you start to see what you have to say and they, you can start to ask questions, it, it really goes from there. Um, but yeah, uh, sometimes you just be like, you, or you see a picture that can help too. 
This is an action picture guy with a big handlebar mustache and a, a top hat, and right. he's an industrialist. It's like, okay, I, th- I think I know who he might be. So, you kind of want yeah. your your snake oil salesman sort of vibe to him, but it is also that, like you said, you have the industrial revolution, you have the patriots, you have the the world's fair and the jazz music, and and it's like, how do you combine all of those into this one floating world? And yeah, it is why it, it is totally wild, and it's uh, you know, it's like I don't know if you guys saw Nightmare Alley, Mm-mm. but but. It, it basically takes place in the, around the carnival atmosphere. And that's kind of what, you know, that feeling is, but in any carnival, it's just, it's great. And there's lights and there's, you know, you swing the hammer and get a stuffed animal mm-hmm. for your best girl and all that stuff and cotton candy. And it's all, you bring the kids, but you know, that the seedy underbelly of, you know, the car, there are carnies you know, involved. And, uh, you know, the bearded lady having a cigar, you know, it's like, um, it's uh, Bruce Springsteen has a song, wild Billy circus story. And, um, if you listen to that, it, it paints a really interesting picture of, you know, the carnival that comes to town and, you know, what, what's going on. It's, it's not as seedy, but, you know, you, you, see, you see what's going on underneath. And I think a lot of Bioshock Infinite has that, you mm-hmm. know, it's just, it's a wonderful, you know, Columbia. And it's like, there's some crap going on there, you know. <laughs> our so. father, our prophet, the patriots, no. Yeah. This place is not okay. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, just f- falling in line, conformity and, you know, do it the company way, much to your own detriment. And then suddenly you start getting attacked by giant robots that look like George Washington. There you go. See? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, you know, and if you've ever had that happen, it is not pleasant. It's a weird, weird game. <laughs> He's got a crank gun. Yes. <laughs> it's like a 10 foot tall robot that looks like George Washington with a crank gun. It's not cool. No. Well, you know, but then you get the, the thing about when you're doing RPGs, it's like you got to find the weapon to defeat him. You know right. what I mean? That, that's then, the best know, thing. Like if you start dying, it'll pop the little hint up on the bottom of the screen with the for better aim, shoot the Patriot in the back. It's like, yes, yeah, so where were you 10 minutes ago? How am I supposed <laughs> to get behind him? <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they, they'd be like, you know, there, there's 11 year olds crying, so we better put that tip in. <laughs> 11 year olds, 29 year olds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, so. <laughs> my my uh my I got that game for free because once they you know it came out they handed me a copy mm-hmm. and I gave it to my my sons who were in that you know prime video game playing age and uh, the older guy just flew through it. I said, "How'd you like it? How's it going?" He goes, "I'm done. I'm playing it again." And I was like, he looked like he was halfway through it. I said, "Wait a minute. This is like this is like five days ago. Did you sleep? Did you do your homework?" Well, and they um, say that like no and no. I think the <laughs> yeah. actual play time of the game, just doing the straight storyline, is only like twenty-seven hours. But still, it was fast. But he said, "But you know, you play it again. If it's if, it's, if the game is any game is made right, you want to play it over and over mm-hmm. again. Uh, they don't all have as specifically linear an ending as as Bioshock Infinite. I'm not giving right. anything away because I think there's a lot of ways to get there. But some sure. games go off, and it's either you know you know you know exit twenty-one for the sequel." <laughs> Or, you know, play through until everybody dies. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I've i made my way through it. But, you know, I, I cut my teeth on Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, the first PlayStation. I was staying up late playing those games. The sun was coming up. My wife, my girlfriend slash wife, on the way to the gym. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to bed. Video games? Yeah. And then we had kids and then they went in the attic. <laughs> right. And then video. Yeah. You just don't have time for video games when you have kids. It's until, time for anything. They're, until they're at the age where you can trust them to be away from where you can see them for 10, 15 minutes at a time. Yeah. Or, or then you start playing with them. I, we had so much fun playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with my, my younger guy. That was mm-hmm. our thing. Saturday yeah. afternoon, you know, in your pajamas and staying. We there. actually, we just got a <laughs> Switch and the Paw Patrol, one of the Paw Patrol video games because we can play it with my daughter and she is starting to learn how to get the controller to work and how to do more than just take pictures and run in circles. But we're getting there. Yeah, there good you for go. you. We need that. <laughs> it's a, they, it's they, a good they, fine motor skill. Yeah, get, get them started early. <laughs> there you go. It gets her to stop jumping on the furniture. So Bill, we all have one of those things that we are super proud of that is just really close to our hearts. What is a hidden gem that you have done or worked on that is uh, really close to your heart? Uh, hmm. 
boy, there's a lot. You know, I I did it. This might not definitely not on IMDb because it's not in a category. But I worked um, on the the audiobook series Geronimo Stilton, uh, and uh, so that is basically this reporter. It's kind of sophisticated, uh, you know. He shouldn't he shouldn't be in the newspaper business, but he is. But he's very sophisticated. Um, so I got to read, and it's his adventures. He's got crazy family, and then he winds up, you know, making pizza in, you know, in Rome. And then he goes to visit the pyramids, and there's a ghost in there. So it's kind of like Scooby Doo, you know. But there's um, uh, but I got to do all the characters. When you're reading an audiobook, as you know, the the reader does all the characters. And standard audiobooks are pretty much straight, you know. If it's the Cockney guy that someone you know encounters in an alley. You know, it's like, and you know, and then he saw Reginald and Reginald says, good eye, how are you doing? You know, blah, blah, blah. If you're doing the cartoon, it's, you know, it's, it's that full Cockney. Audiobooks are generally more subdued. So you don't scare the heck out of someone when they're driving down, the, you know, I-90. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's like, oh, God, you geek, God, cracky, you more wall, but it's like, I gotta, so, um, but with Geronimo Stilton, it was a kid's audio book. So I started doing that and then wound up doing a ton of stuff for a uh, scholastic, re do, basically read alongs for kids. And uh, so that was just really, really fun because you knew that it was it was wholesome and it was like reaching these, you know, little kids that are learning to read. And, you know, you get little fan mail with the picture of, you know, a five year old drawing the, you know, Geronimo Stilton or anybody. So it, it, it's it's kind of heartwarming. It's kind of nice. Um you know, and then, you know, the next week I run out, I'm doing Mafia 2 and I'm, <laughs> you know, the dark, the dark. <laughs> it's like, it's like this, this would traumatize these children. Um, so, so Scholastic was like a palate cleanser. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> but can we say it's the main course of the dessert? <laughs> it's, sure, it's, absolutely. It's over so fast. These palate cleansers just are fleeting. But, um, but yeah, so... Uh, Th th those things, children's stuff, anytime. And then I actually uh, went, went to a local library, I think it was Barnes and Noble. And I said, um, listen, I want to do a, a series for kids where, and it was called how to read to your parents. So it was basically getting kids in the room and saying, we're going to show you how to, you know, read with your parents. Cause parents are just like, all right, a little red riding hood. Look, I know how this ends. It doesn't end well. You know, <laughs> it's like a lot of them die. <laughs> So uh, the wolf dies, everybody dies, cut her open. Yeah. So, um, uh, and, and that's not what I do with my kids. But um, yeah, so it was the idea that, that you know, I could do stuff for kids. And uh, it, it was great. And it, it's heartwarming and it, it kind of, it does bring you back. And then when I started reading to my kids, they liked it up to a point. <laughs> At one point, I was, I was doing the Harry Potter series, uh, you know, and uh, I was just reading with them uh, and cursing out. I guess Dick Dale because he did the not Dick Dale. Who's the guy that did Barnum? You guys didn't know this P.T. Barnum on Broadway, the show. Not Dick do Dale. not know. Anyway, anyway, uh, it, he was doing the series, but I was going to read it to my kids using all the voices. And at one point, my younger guy said to my wife, "Can you read tonight and not do the voices?" <laughs> so <laughs> I think I might have come, come a little too strong to them. But um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh. Uh, kids that's the thing that that seems to get the purest um you know the pur purest reaction although i have to say with arcane uh i i'm really surprised just how um just how uh the, the fans are are very warm and very involved and they don't miss a trick and that's that's a more recent thing that i'm like wow am i proud to be part of that there you go well since you brought up arcane let's talk about arcane uh so my daughter is actually a huge fan of the show and she got me interested in the show as well. And um, for a guy that never played League of Legends, has no idea of the backstory of anything coming into this or anything involved with this or, you know, whatever. I have to tell, tell you from what I, you know, what I have watched in the series and uh, I can't wait to see more of the series, but it's one of the best animated shows in a long time very well told uh, told story very well the the animation style itself is amazing so immaculately drawn and, and so so I, I came into this blind but i have to say i'm actually rather glad that i came into this blind yeah um, i mean 
I did too, because I, I knew about League of Legends and I knew that the game was affiliated with League of Legends. We were out with somebody for some, you know, went to see a show and we're having dinner and the daughter, this woman's daughter was there. And uh, I knew that Arcane was based on League of Legends. And uh, the woman asked me, so Bill, what have you been doing? Any cool project? I said, yeah, I'm doing one that's based on a video game. Can't talk about it. And the daughter says, is it League of Legends? <laughs> because, <laughs> it, it, because they're rabid. The fans are right. rabid. And it is huge. And people kept saying, do you know what you're involved in? And I'm like, yeah. It's just, they said, no, no, no. I don't think you have any idea. And then so so basically we're looking at a situation where it's like, I'm going to tell you the funniest joke in the world. And wait till you how funny this joke is. You're not going to be able to stop laughing. Uh, and then you tell the joke and they're like, that wasn't that good. <laughs> you know, the, it was so, like, am I being set up? It's like, well, I shouldn't have said it was funny. Um, here's a stupid joke, you know, and you tell them it's really funny. Right. But um, and then. You know, as we progressed and the pandemic happened, it was basically put off. The release was put off for a solid year. It's supposed yeah. to be October 20. Um, and it's like we the French guys ain't doing it. <laughs> the French guys are not animating. No, no, no. So um, <laughs> uh, and then it came out and I'm thinking like, boy, I really hope it's good. And then I saw it and I, I couldn't believe how good that animation is. And oh, then that's one thing when you see. And they, we didn't do a lot of uh, facial capture for that, you know. They had, the, but there was, you know, a camera there. So I think, you know, the actors they hired were good enough that, you know, th there was a lot of character stuff that they could draw from, literally. But um, then the story, uh, I, I was, uh, I, yeah. couldn't, I, I couldn't stand watching it. And then the theme song. It's my, my wife said, you know, on Netflix, it's like, can you fast forward through the the credits? I'm like, I said no, and she said why? I said the song, the yeah. song. It's so, so good. Um, such a perfect uh, time to be all those things. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, it really was an experience. And look, my pardon, it was not gigantic. I cannot tell you if I'll be back for the second season or not. Um, uh, Understood. But, uh, w you know, and, and by the way, there's no shortage of, of resources for this thing because of the League of Legends franchise and Riot Games and stuff. Right. So, um, and, and the people I got to meet when I went to like the, uh, the, the, the third prim uh, the premiere of the last three episodes – they did this big event in Los Angeles, and I went out for it and really got to meet for the first time uh, the people that I worked with. And, man, they're nice. What a what a great community nice. in, in, in L.A. They're just really nice. S Sally uh, from um, – Yeah, Sally. Yeah. Yeah. She, I, I just did a streamily live signing thing. They do that now because of the pandemic, and she popped on at the end. But, again, her and her son, Max, I got to meet him. So now we're yeah. back to kids. You know, so yeah, that was that was a really great one, and you know, yeah, I, I thought that the, one of the things that the show did really well was it 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 used a lot of the things that were going on in the show for metaphors as other things, um, like th so talking about your character Huck, you you look at what happened with him. Now here's a guy who was a very shrewd businessman, all these different things, and you know, it was you know, I thought his story arc, what happened between the two episodes that you that that he's in showed was going on with the Undercity in, in Piltover. And then also, uh, even if you look at it with what happens between between Huck and Vi, it's almost, you know, it can be used as a good metaphor for what happens with addiction uh, in, in real life with people. That's what's, exactly what's going on. what it is. Or, or, you know, maybe not even addiction. I mean, because I think if you, if you took the actual, you know, propellant out of it, <laughs> um, I think it's really about, you know, what people will do to basically be noticed. Uh, yeah. And how and how hard that is when you, you spend, you know, uh, what you feel is your whole life just just clawing through and not being able to do mm -hmm. anything, you know, and that that great line. I just, you know, wanted someone to be afraid of me, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it, it said so much. And it, like I said, it was only two episodes at that point. It started off. There were there were extras. But um, but, but that's one, one one reason because of the narrative. I'm like, if you have to cut something, cut it. You know, <laughs> please don't tell anybody I said that though. But um, yeah, that, that whole that yeah that whole <laughs> idea of you know what what a horrible state he got himself into. Yet mm -hmm. he finds this incredible moment of redemption. Um, mm -hmm. I wish yeah. people would talk about that more because it moved me. But um. But, you know, th th that's kind of a theme that goes through the show. What happens when, you know, life deals you a, a certain hand uh, and you do your best and maybe you think you're doing your best and you realize like, oh, no, no, yeah. you're evil <laughs> or I'm seeking revenge and I shouldn't be seeking revenge, uh, you know. And, of course, you know, Silco's great line, don't cry, you're perfect. It's like, right. 
you know, lo- love, love can happen there too. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not just because yeah. he's a bad person. He can't, the, the goodness isn't still in him. So it's, it's, it's all there. And it's, you know, there's so much more to come. So. And, and I, and I love the fact that one of the reoccurring themes in the show is the lengths that people will go to get the things that they feel they absolutely have to have, you know, what you see powder doing to, to you know, throughout the show, trying to get her own redemption and, and follow and find out what, who she is, what she is, why she is all these different things and, and have a reconnection. And then, you know, it, Vi as well. And then we, again, your character, Huck, you know, what he goes through so that people will notice him. What, why is that so important to him and, and yeah. the links that he's willing to go through that. And it's just, it's kind of a neat storyline to see because sometimes when that storyline gets played out, it's, it's just like, Oh yeah, well I did a bad thing. And, but, but there's the, the, one of the things I loved of what they did in Arcane is it wasn't just small little truncated sections. They took it and then they exploded it out nicely. So you could really see the character's development. I just, I, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's you know, these writers, you know, they, and I met some of them when I was in LA and uh, you, get, you know, you look at them, they're just like, you know, it's, it's a typical video game, video game thing. It's like, he just looks like a guy, a kind of, kind of a nice unassuming guy and you realize what's you know what is boiling deep within them you know as writers and it's like what if this happens but yeah that that theme of you know where you're going to wind up what you're doing you know mistakes you've made what you think you want is one thing and then realizing maybe that's not what i want or the lengths you all go like you know victor it's like he's just basically takes the shimmer for probably a similar reason as huck Mm -hmm. you know um uh uh, and then, you know, the the why of it all or just the misunderstanding, like, no, she didn't really leave you. Y- you're mistaken. Give her a chance. And then something happens and that chance is blown. It's like the girl you didn't ask to the prom again. It's like what? a recurring thing with me, by the way. But um, uh, it, it's just like that's gone. That moment is gone forever. And that th- this must have been the reason. And then it's like you if you had just taken the time to ask. You know, maybe you would have discovered that there was there was room for healing here as opposed to like, well, I'm now I'm really going to go bat crazy. You know? Right, right. <laughs> it's yeah, like, cause I'm angry. It's like, well, you didn't give me a chance to explain. So um, but yeah, so it, w- w- when there's that much in a cartoon, you know, you you are mm-hmm. uh, it, it, they, they really broke ground. And, you know, I think they they won a, a fair share of awards so far. Not enough to suit me. Yeah, I think I counted 12 so far. Yeah. They've so won, it's, they've won 12. Should have been more. That's great. You know, and getting, you know, 10 ratings on the, the you know, the, the you know, the, the, the most deeply involved, you know, gaming or animation sites. They're giving it 10s. It's like everyone was talking about that when we were out there. It's like, we got a 10. Oh, we got a 10. So cool. so. Yeah. Well, it's deserved. I feel like Arcane 2 has open pathways for other shows for other either video game based shows or even like um the critical role team has come out with vox machina with their cartoon that it's it's opened these pathways for more stories like that and for cartoons to not necessarily be for kids like yeah well be taken like really really seriously and it's like it's like halo that's like another Mm -hmm. show and yeah uh, but that i think i believe is is live action yeah it is um there's something else I did that I, I, I called my agent. I said, hey, th- they announced that they're going to be doing this. I can't think what the, the, the game, game-based game show. And I was all excited because I whatever the show I, it was, I, you know, I, I had a pardon. I'm like, I, I could do this. I could do this, you know, in the, the actual uh, animated show. And she said, Bill, it's, it's live action. So now we're back to like the six foot five cowboy. Do you know what I mean? You're not going to uh, put a breast yeah. breast plate and a helmet on me. Do you know what I mean? It's like, he still doesn't look six five. <laughs> I could, I could beat the crap out of that guy. Put me next to really short people. I look fine. Exactly. Give me some stilts. I'll rock this. I mean, with Lord of the Rings, they made people look different heights. So right, they made the the <laughs> tallest character be the dwarf, or the tallest actor be the dwarf. Um, yes, but you know that's all right. That said, that he identifies as a tall person, or or the opposite. <laughs> I the guys, sometimes I identify as a billionaire who can go into space. <laughs> you know, that doesn't put me on the rocket. <laughs> Sometimes I just identify as a human burrito and I stay wrapped up in my covers <laughs> because mm, life is easier that way. <laughs> so Bill, while doing research for today and getting familiar with 
the stuff that you've done, I stumbled upon your YouTube channel. Oh no. Oh yes. No. I laughed so hard at the airplane food. Oh yes, <laughs> the airplane meal. The airplane meal one got me. Like I, I was done, but the checking for doneness and you bounce the piece of chicken and the boing sound like yes, I, it, yeah you got you got to have the sound effect for that one it killed uh, me yeah news meal it's 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 a funny thing because now we're back to like the the filmmaking and on camera thing mm -hmm. and uh I, I we started doing that because we had had ideas for uh food shows this mm -hmm. is you know i don't know 10 or 15 years ago whatever it was and uh we started pitching food shows and we had a lot of different ones. One was uh, the OCD chef, obsessive compulsive dinners was another, um, where I get <laughs> really involved, really involved with like doing, and it, you would do like a dinner party. So if it was the bowling dinner, you would get, you know, bowling alley fries, uh, you know, and spare ribs, you know, and Love the we we do the table. The table was like, a you know, you put like contact paper down, make it look like a bowling alley and the <laughs> gutters have the appetizers in it and the pins have drinks in them, you know. So it was like a, a full blown how to do a, you know, an off the wall dinner party. Um, they didn't like it. But <laughs> but the point is, I started doing more and more cooking because I like to cook anyway. And then uh, 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 I started, you know, pitching that show where I'm, you know, doing news based things current mm -hmm. things you know uh and they said well are you a chef and i said i know oh well you're not an expert that was the thing you got to be an expert so i heard that enough times when i said to the producer i said you know i'm gonna get a degree so i did i got i got like you know my what i call my correspondence school <laughs> chef gourmet chef certificate um and then uh like a year after that he called me he goes hey bill listen uh, we want to talk to food network again he goes but you know it's interesting do you know what they're looking for now and i said what he said non-chefs so um i've met you know, yes. like, but of course it's like we're looking for veterans it's like well i'll enlist for four years you know <laughs> and i got shrapnel in my hip you know and it's like you know what they want now non-veterans it's like what about the shrapnel so um uh, uh yeah so we've been doing that we're taking a little bit of break right now but people keep saying bill what about i did oscar dinners for a while uh and they said that but people would come over for those uh but yeah it was really fun and i constantly especially during the pandemic i did like how to cook stuff and keep your spouse happy during the pandemic and all that stuff um but yeah it's been really fun but it's a great thing but that, that it goes back to my filmmaking and i said to my younger son who was actually a theater major heaven help us um uh he you know i said look you gotta he's a film minor so i was a, a you know theater major with a, a film major he's a theater major with a film minor and um <laughs> you know i said it's content creation now so that's like one of the things i do to keep you know my fingers in as many things as i can but not your blueberry pie so there oh, you no. go there you go but the, thank you for noticing and watching yes I, I, it was fantastic it cracked me up <laughs> so uh, that's a, and isn't that what it's about Crack well phone. yes but i that's love I TikToks. The... <laughs> or tiktoks yeah that's my agency i just TikTok. i love that that aspect of humor that sense of humor like that is right up my alley of the just bizarre but bizarre enough that it works like it, it's that fine line teetering of this isn't completely insane, but it's functional. And that's that's where I am on a daily basis. Yes, yeah, so, especially as, as, you know, as a mom who cooks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you got to put food on the table. Um, yes. But yeah, a lot of times we'll make stuff and it's like, oh, we did the lobster dinner. It's like, oh, I guess we'll have to have lobster tonight. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but we got tuition. We have tuition before that, that lobsters are bought, you know, then they don't keep. So, um, but yeah, so that that's something that, that you know, I, I just, I, I love doing it and I love shooting stuff and I've got a lot of equipment. <laughs> so, and during the pandemic, I, I built a slot car track and I did uh, food videos and then as much, you know, uh, stuff in the studio as I could, which thankfully, if people have mentioned this, I, I ha they haven't mentioned it, I'd be surprised. But, you know, if you have a home studio in the pandemic, that was a really good thing to have already set up because mm -hmm. uh, you could do stuff from home. And there was a period where, you know, I, this is where I'm working, you know, uh, but I was in the city today doing something. So we're, we're coming back, fingers crossed. Uh, and it's great because the studio guys, they got to make money. They want people right. in their studio. 
So, so we have a Facebook group that has about two hundred and two thousand members. Yeah, good. And good for you. It is just filled with memes. It is this mixed with this memes galore. And so, what characters or what two characters of yours would you like to see become nemesis of each other? Nemesis. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I would like. First of all, w- one of my favorites is Sparks from from C Lab, and uh, I think he could be anybody's nemesis because I really think that you know some of what drives Sparks is just like you know getting people's Irish up. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you know, I, I just so I think you could put it with anybody. Went with Geronimo Stilton. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, or, or you, you know, withdraw. Well, maybe Jeremiah Fink would be better because he would really piss him off. So uh, it, he would be like the guy that I I would look to uh, in that in that kind of realm of boy, you know, sticking him in there with somebody would would, would be interesting to me. And 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 you could pick, you know, the nicer the better, or the more evil the better. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So uh, so uh, so yeah, I really haven't thought about it, but sometimes you'll see memes with with sparks in them. Uh, and uh, or I'll, I'll make them myself. <laughs> have some more. No, I, I said that's most most of the fun is making the memes. Oh, definitely get the little meme generator. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then you you zoom in on it so you don't get the watermark. <laughs> so you're basically. <laughs> oh my! Oh, have I said too much? <laughs> we heard um, nothing. Thank you. Paid I, for nothing. it. No. <laughs> but yeah, it's really good. It's all about it's all about the font, isn't it? <laughs> mm-hmm. You well, can't absolutely. do like you know. Can't do comic sans on the uh, on the, the the meme. It has to be that certain like white white font. There you um, go. Unless your meme is about comic sans, and then using comic sans just makes it better. Exactly. Just, well, yeah, but that's expected. But, you know, that's but you know, some of them just don't miss like that that goofy you know the goofy nerdy kid just saying anything. Um, and uh, yeah, well, the, my my sons will just sit there and basically hang upside down on the couch, looking and laughing. I'm like, what are you watching? They'd be like memes <laughs> it's exactly like, they're, they're, they're across the room and they're sending memes to each other it's like guys sit next to each other your brothers you know but they're across the room like eh. it's a really funny one so yeah i do that to my wife from across the house i understand <laughs> i do that to my husband from the other side of the couch so Man, it's oh, understandable. I'll, I'll text my wife from the studio like, like chill the glasses you know coming <laughs> up in 20 minutes you know it's like could you have shouted up the stairs you know it's not that big a house People, I live in New Jersey, but, you know, we're New Yorkers. Um, and uh, when I moved to New Jersey and people, especially, you know, actors, they'd be like, uh, so I hear you're going out to New Jersey. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And they say, wow, 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 dude. I, I don't know. And so they think I live in South Fork. Do you know what I mean? They, they think I have the mansion. Do you know? mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And, and it's like, it's like, guys, you know, it's, it's suburban New Jersey. It's a nice place. It's a great town. It's got a fire whistle. Um, but uh, it, it is funny that perception. But you know, our, our house is it, is wonderful. But it, you know, it's it, there aren't servings. You know, servants running around with you know with my food servings and my and portion control, or cigars and brandy. That's that's, that's more my speed. That is what your teenagers were for. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, there you go. Well, Bill, I, we've gotten to a point of, show, and I'm glad you brought up memes because we've gotten to a point of the show where we like to run our guests through a little bit of a quiz. Now, yeah, this is a four question quiz and the quiz is all multiple choice. So it's not, so hopefully it won't be that, that difficult for you. But the qu- name of this quiz is name that bill. So we're going to talk, okay. we're going to give you famous bills over the years and you have to tell us what they're famous for. Oh my goodness. Okay. okay this is really fun. All right, cool. So out of the four questions, if you get three out of the four, correct, we'd like to send you this book which is called Custodians of the Cosmos, which is written by Drayton Allen. He's the original founder of the funny science fiction group that we have 200,000 members of. And it's all about a young man who wanted to join something quite like Starfleet, but for litigious reason, for litigious reasons, not Starfleet. Uh, but anyway, he washed out, rejoined, and now he boldly cleans up after those who boldly just went. So it's pretty funny. <laughs> and uh, if you get less than three, we take a picture of you. We make a meme out of you, and we put you into our group. We call it our fun sequence. Oh, Mike, this well, that, that's 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 a, a feature and benefit, though, right? Well, I th- I like to think so, and well, it's got a pretty, pretty yeah. You got a pretty. It's it's a great motivator. There you go. 
All and right. It so benefits us even if you do fail. There All you right. go. All right. All so right, so we, we got go. four. Yeah. Four questions. And uh, so what they'll do is they'll, they'll give you the name uh, or what the person does. And then uh, three last names. And you got to pick the, the last name that does the thing. Okay. okay. So it's, it's name, occupation, and then a choice of names that go with him or her. Correct. Because, you know, so Billy like, Burke. so like in this one, it'd be like uh, this, as an example, this bill does voiceover work. Is it Bill Loble? Is it Bill Burr? Or is it, you know, Bill Hamilton? You know, and so it'd be, oh, Bill Loble. Okay. Got it. All right. Take us away, Nick. This bill makes computers. Is it Murray, Gates, or Clinton? That is Gates. Correct. Yes. Right. Number two. This bill was a president of the United States. Is that Taft, Murray, or Gates? William Howard Taft. There you go. All right. I almost used that Clinton for that question. one, but it, that yeah. was a trick question. Nobody called him Bill. Didn't he no. die in a bathtub? He did. Yes. Yes. Nobody called him Bill, but it was it was it was meant for misdirection, but you were not misdirected. I have sad face now. Well, you okay. know, when you're as political as I am. No. <laughs> I think there's a, a movie where Bill Murray does play the president. Probably. Is there really? It's not Maybe. it's not Caddyshack, is like it? He's the president of a golf course at Caddyshack. This bill acted like other people. Is it Gates, O'Reilly, or Murray? Well, Murray. All right, so that's three. That he gets still you. acts like other people. Yeah. So and, that gets you. There is, sorry, there is a movie where Bill Murray plays a president. Which one is it? Uh, is that the bonus question? Hyde Park on Hudson. Oh my. Never he heard played, of it. He played Franklin Delano Roosevelt. All right. Oh, my All God, right. that's right. You know, there was a period when they, you know, they were having him play. There was not only did like an 1890s thing, and they tried mm -hmm. to like Merchant Ivory. And he had like, you know, the, the straw hat. I'm like, what are they doing to Bill Murray? <laughs> right. All right. I'm on with the quiz. Right. I'm sorry. Question number right. four. Well, hold on. Oh, sorry. Wait. I'm sorry. You're out of meme land. So we don't have to take a picture of you making meme out of you. But you do get the book. Custodians I'm of the very Club. excited. And All right, this one. for funsies. There you go. Stole your word. I know. Okay. It's good. Number four. <laughs> this bill played sports. <laughs> Was it Monroe, De Blazo, or Russell? Bill Russell. Correct. Very yeah, good. Four for was four. Was he a Laker? He no, he Bill, no, he No, he played for the Celtics. Oh, okay, there you go. See, I, I told you, I'm not the sports Every, guy. Everybody he in Boston is going to hate quiz. you. Bill Russell. Yeah. Yeah. Monroe. Earl Monroe. Earl Monroe was was uh, on the Knicks. There you Earl go. The Pearl. Earl the Pearl. That's absolutely right. Everybody in Boston can be mad about the fact that their team name is pronounced wrong as well. So. It's not they, they don't call it the Celtics. No, <laughs> they're the Celtics, and it's that's wrong. No, no, no. But I, 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 I listen. I, I I'm a Yankee <laughs> fan, so but you know, so you know how I feel about the Red Sox. But one of my close friends is um is a Red Sox guy, and you know he's a producer, so I always tell him, you know, they're not a bad team. <laughs> but uh, they're not a bad team. They just suck. <laughs> Go bad. are the worst. Well, Bill, thank you so much for being on the show today. Where can listeners go to find out more about you and what you're working on? Well, let's see. Um, you could go. Uh, I've 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 kind of taken a turn in terms of like how much social, you know, promotion I do on Instagram. So you can see me on Instagram at at b lobley, or as someone say blobly. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter, which is at Bill Lobley. That's three L's in a row, B-I-L-L-L-O-B-L-E-Y. Um, or if you want, uh, I do this thing for extremely for like live autograph signings. If you feel like you really want, a, you know, one of my characters to sign a, a picture, you can, you can do that through Streamly and have live signings to that. And I just recently got on Cameo. So if you wanted me or one of my other characters to wish you a happy birthday, good luck at the new job, or maybe you just need to pick me up at the end of the day, someone's having a rough time, I can do that too. And, you know, you can customize the message. So you hold it up in your phone. And it's like, you know, hi, Tim, how are you? You know, sorry, they're stealing your phrases and words, but 
you've got more. <laughs> We're sending you a dictionary, you know, so so there you go. There's that. So you can you can find me there. You could go to newsmeals.com and see some silly food videos. We haven't done one in a little while, but that's OK. Um, and then I'm probably on billobly.com, although some people tell me I really need to update my website. <laughs> but um but yeah and then in terms of projects as you know with video games sometimes they don't let you talk about them uh but Understood. i you know, so just look and and you'll you should be able to to see it and if there's anything that's coming up that i can talk about i will have lately been really try to be a lot more careful about you know publicizing it so people get a sense just did Perfect. A, uh, podcast well, we are yesterday. going to definitely link your socials and your website and news meals because people need to watch news meals it's funny it's just god bless you <laughs> it's too well, you much got, fun. you guys you guys are great you guys are all oh, thank you so relaxed and fun and it's also really good that there's three of you so you know you you feel like you're you're sitting around chatting with a bunch of friends so it, it's it's been really oh fun. thank you well that's that's the vibe we go for that's Happy we're hoping people feel like it's working Sorry. send Excellent. me a dress and maybe i'll send you a news mails t-shirt if you're good Ooh. okay all right. I just want to remind everybody that subscribing is the single most important thing that you can do to ensure that we get more amazing guests like Bill Loblay to come on our show and have these funny moments for you to be able to listen to. So please subscribe. Nick's going to pop up that little button right down on there. We'll, we'll find something on the screen. You'll see it and click it down below. That's the subscribe button, kids. You want to hit that one. That makes sure that we grow. We get more good guests and you'll going to go check out uh, Bill's work on all the aforementioned sites uh, as well. And if for whatever reason you are not happy with the content of today's show, please feel free to lodge a complaint with the head of our complaint department. That, of course, is Huck from Arcane. Huck was a shrewd businessman in the days before Shimmer. So don't feel the need for more than two copies of the complaint. We're pretty sure he can handle it. But be prepared for him to do whatever he needs to do to get more Shimmer. So if you want your evil deeds and ill wishes to come true upon the, the force, the faces of the offending parties, might we suggest that you line the pockets of your complaint forms with a little shimmer? See, we might be bad at podcasting, but we still try to be helpful with tips. Thanks again, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thank you guys. <laughs> really fun. All right, that's going to conclude us for Funny Science Fiction Podcast. Until next time, guys. Goodbye. Bye. Keep playing. Gaming is for everyone. Our show is brought to you by our charity sponsor, the Red Shirt Widows of Orphans Fund, which supports the Witch Upon the Teen Foundation and helps out sick kids if they need it most. And just imagine the comfort you'll give Red Shirt Crewman number 81. He'll know that when he puts on the red shirt, joins by a powder and a raid in Piltover, that he didn't leave his family destitute and without hope because the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund has his back and what's left of his dignity. And speaking of sponsors and show partners, check out this short video from our good friends over at Level Up Lightsabers. Information about Level Up Lightsabers and their online training sessions can be found in the episode description below. On behalf of the rest of the hosts of Funny Science Fiction, we'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. If you'd like to be a guest on one of our future episodes, please contact us by means of our Facebook group, Funny Science Fiction. You can find us on Twitter or Instagram using the handle at Funny Sci-Fi, or you can go to DraytonAllen.com and click the contact me link at the bottom of the page. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed the episode. 